Coming up, we'll talk about Coach Strong's first victory at Texas, and we'll give you an injury update. We'll also talk volleyball, soccer, and even X Games. All this and more coming up on College Press Box. Welcome to College Press Box. I'm your host, Tier Newbaum. Tonight, joining me is Jeff Barker. Jeff, how's it going? I am excellent, Tier. How was your long weekend? My long weekend was great. The Horns got a win, and here we are. But this morning at Charlie Strong's press conference, he announced that quarterback David Ash will not be playing in this weekend's game against BYU. This was due to concussion-like symptoms that Ash didn't have until after the game Saturday night when he said he felt dizziness and headaches. He then called the medical staff and now remains under evaluation. Also, Texas center Dominic Espinosa will undergo surgery this Wednesday due to a fracture in his right ankle. So, Jeff, this is huge for the Texas offense. Two key players, two key leaders. What does Texas do from here? Yeah, I mean, these are possibly the worst two injuries that Texas could have. But, I mean, let's start with David Ash first. Obviously, I think that's probably the worst. Um, I mean, when, when you look at it, they thought they had finally resolved that uncertainty at the quarterback position, you know, and now they bring back that question mark into the mix at the most important position on the roster, the QB position. They're going to bring in swoops and be interested to see, you know, what kind of packages Sean Watson has for him. They open a new side of the playbook, you know, that we haven't seen at all. It's going to be really important to get that ground game involved. Malcolm Brown, Jonathan Gray, those guys are really going to have to step up. You know, receivers on the outside are going to have to step up. We can't have any, you know, can't have any drop balls like they had at the beginning of the game against North Texas. Um, and then when you look at Espinoza, I mean, he was the only, or going into the game on Saturday against North Texas, he was the only starter on the offensive line that had started more than 10 career games. So that's obviously a huge loss. Right, yeah. It's, I'm, I'm really curious to see what Texas is going to do this weekend. Yeah, well, let's take you guys out to DKR for the highlights against North Texas on Saturday. Guys getting pumped up, trying to put that T back in Texas. Charlie Strong's first game out there. Pick things up early first quarter. Josh Greer's pass is picked off by White Chocolate, the walk-on safety, Dylan Haynes. They gave him that nickname, as fellow DBs did. Uh, Horns weren't able to catch him there, though. Nick Rose missed a 38-yard field goal. Still in the first tier. Ash drops back to pass. Escapes a little pressure from the weak, mean, green defense right there. Rolls to his right. Hits John Harris, who was a surprise in this game. Harris actually, a couple plays before that, dropped two passes. A few... Second quarter right here, Texas up 14-0. DeMarco Cobbs and Mikhail Thompson showing that dominating defense that the Horns worked on during fall camp, sacking Josh Gere. Second quarter, Texas leads 21-0. John Harris, David Ash connect again over the middle. And that was a huge connection right there for them to get John Harris going. Seven catches, 110 yards, and a touchdown for him. Here on the goal line here, Horns weren't able to punch it in. Three plays in a row. They went for it on fourth down. Play action, roll out David Ash. Look at the wheels right there, diving into the end zone for the touchdown. Not much in the second half. Oh, UT President Bill Powers right there getting pumped. Get it, Bill. You go, you go. And I actually had a, I was fortunate enough to be out there covering the game this Saturday. So here's more from the UT home opener. For the first time in 16 years, Texas football fans saw a new head coach pacing the sidelines during Saturday night's season over against North Texas. You know, we got him with the ice bucket, but um, he didn't think we was going to get him. It was kind of surprising, but we had to welcome, him to, welcome them, him to Texas. So The Warrens were able to get their new coach a 38-7 win in his inaugural game, and in his post-game press conference, Coach Strong seemed pleased with the way his team played. It's a great uh, team victory, and you see all three phases, offensively, defensively, and special teams, and on defense, just the way uh, Another bright spot for the Horns on Saturday night was the performance of some unexpected players. Walk-on safety Dylan Haynes grabbed an interception early on in the first quarter to get the Horns defense going. And after recovering from some early drops, senior wide receiver John Harris came out of nowhere catching seven passes for 110 yards and a touchdown. It's a very special moment for me to come out and, you know, take my first snap at Division I college football when, you know, there's a lot of people that 
you know, I never thought I would make it. So, you know, it's a really special moment and to share it with, all, you know, the 10 other guys on the field and have the interception, have everyone come up and celebrate me. It's really an awesome feeling. The Horns did what they were supposed to do Saturday, taking care of a weaker North Texas team. And now they will look to get revenge next week when they host BYU, a team they gave up a school record 550 rushing yards to last year. Next week's going to be going to be difficult. We got to we got to play. They played well uh, the other night. We definitely watched them. Uh, but they're, you know, they're they're a good team and we're excited to get back out there again with them. Jeff Barker, College Press Box. So for the past year this Texas team has constantly re been reminded about the loss from last year against BYU. Um, 40 to 21 loss. I mean, what kind of attitudes do you think these players have going into this weekend? Yeah, after the game on Saturday, I actually talked to some of the senior leaders, Quandre Diggs, Diggs cornerback on defense, and then running back Malcolm Brown on offense. Yeah. And, you know, these guys kind of underplayed it a little bit. They kind of just gave me that, you know, it's just the next game in the schedule. We're just taking it one game at a time, week by week. But you know these guys are embarrassed about that loss last year, and they're going to come out ready to play. They're going to be pumped up for it. Yeah, you I know. think they're going to be feisty. Got, got, I think so, too. Got revenge on their minds. Yeah, they do. Well, don't go anywhere because we have a lot more Texas football to talk about when we come back. Stay tuned. It's College Press Box. Welcome back to College Press Box. This past Friday, Texas soccer took on Arkansas in front of over 1,300 fans. The game started an hour and a half early due to an early lightning delay, but that didn't stop either team from coming out to compete. Let's head to the highlights. So the players are being introduced in the season's first home game, second overtime period. The score is tied 0-0. Tyler Allen with a shot, and it's blocked by Abby Smith. Still 0-0 in the 104th minute. Erica Miller, nope, saved by Smith. Abby Smith taking a shot for Texas at almost halfway across the field. Could she do it? Carter with the save. After the second overtime in 110 total minutes, neither team is able to score, and the game is tied. So later in the weekend, the Horns dominated Nevada 5-1. Texas senior defender Brooke Gilbert and freshman forward Olivia Brooke both achieved their first two goal matches of their career, while sophomore forward Jasmine Hart had three assists against the Wolfpack. In the second stanza, UT was credited with the first 14 shots of the four final 45 minutes, and in the total, the Horns outshot Nevada 26-9. So, Jeff, how do you see this team faring in terms of consistency this season? Oh, you know, when you look at these two games, Friday and Sunday, not really too worried about the consistency for them. Um, I mean, it's still really early on in the season. You know, it's better to see them go from scoring zero goals to five goals as opposed to scoring five goals and then zero. But, you know, I mean, I think, um, you know, I got goalkeeper Abby Smith's going to be key for them. But, I mean, I think they're going to be just fine. I think they're going to have a much better performance than last year. I think so, too. So we see a lot, a lot of young potential on the Horns volleyball team this season. After number two Texas defeated Seattle three to zero this past weekend, head coach Jarrett Elliott said the team is playing at a high level and that th that they show a lot of talent and potential. So. Are we going to see another national championship team this year? You know, I'm a believer. I think they definitely have the potential to be a national championship team again. I mean, you look at it, they got a solid mix of, you know, that veteran leadership and then that young talent coming in. So we'll see, you know, how much of the, uh, you know, young girls that they can get in there and, you know, see if they can get them to contribute to the team. Uh, but I think they definitely, you know, should be one of the favorites to win the championship. Yeah, Texas volleyball always is fun to watch. Absolutely. They always come out there with a lot of energy, but don't go anywhere because we're going to see and talk about the X Games coming up next. Welcome back to College Press Box. As many of you know, the X Games took place in Austin this past summer. Some of our fellow TSTV friends and Longhorn Hip Hop caught up with many of the athletes to talk about the games and their experience in Austin. Here's what they had to say. Moving from LA to Austin, 
Austin is probably one of the best moves they made recently. Uh, just because it was kind of getting stale in LA, it was kind of just like a made-for-TV kind of show. I think they were just getting, you know, it was just getting, they were just getting too accustomed to it, you know, and bringing it to Austin, you know, the the, the, the vibe is just so much more fresh and, and alive now. People are just stoked to have us, and the town's amazing, you know, downtown is so fun, and it's got the nightlife, it's got, um, it's got Coda. Coda's the best track in America. I love, I come here every year for F1. It's just a, a great vibe. You know, we were in Brazil last year, Iguazu Falls in Brazil, and that is literally in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of, the, of South America. It is very far from any of the big cities. Little tiny town, beautiful falls, right on the border of, you know, and it's a tiny little town in the middle of nowhere, and there's people that skateboard and ride bikes there. You know, it's it's all over the world, literally. And here in Austin, there's a huge scene for it. It's a hub for BMX. I know that, obviously, because I BMX. And I, I lived here for a while, a couple years back. And uh, I've spent lots of time down here. And there's a lot to ride here, a lot of people to ride with. And the skating is just as big. There's tons of skaters here. And there's tons of places to skate. Oh, it was awesome. I mean, it was, it was full house. <laughs> You know, full house for the whole street blocked off, and the fact that we get to do it in places like that now shows how far X Games have come for sure. And what do you think? What do you think of Austin community and the crowd, like especially now that things have gone underway? How, what do you think about this? About being here for the X Games? Um, I I love it. It's uh, it's I think it's a great town. It's a fitting fitting venue. Like the people here are. are more youth oriented and and you know about our type of culture and um it's a perfect fit i mean i honestly like this is kind of outside the city so i don't feel like it's had that same synergy that we had last night in front of the capitol but at the same time the people have really embraced it here Again, to our friends here at Longhorn Hip Hop for that awesome X Game X Games footage right there. Now let's take a look at what's going on this week in Longhorn Sports. Friday, September 5th, we got soccer at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. That's at 5 p.m. Saturday the 6th, football will host BYU 6:30. You can catch that one on Fox Sports One. Volleyball will head to Florida to take on the Gators 6:30 p.m. And then Sunday Fun Day to wrap up the week, soccer will take on Montana 7:30 p.m. You can catch that one on Longhorn Network. That's all the time we have for tonight, but real quick, BYU versus Texas score predictions. Uh, the Longhorn faithful out there aren't going to like me for this one. I'm going to go 28-21 BYU. I just don't know if Swoops and the offense have enough to get it done. Really? Swoops inexperienced. Okay, I'm going to go 28-10 Texas. Okay. So thanks for tuning in to College Press Box. You can follow them at College Press Box. Also, you can catch College Crossfire Wednesdays at 9.30 and follow them at College Expire. For Jeff Barker, I'm Tierra Newbaum. Good night.